Hello, and thank you for joining us. My name is Carlos Alberto Navarro. I'm Megan Elizabeth Navarro. And we are Megalos. Oh, thank you for joining us, whether you're listening to our podcast on Spotify, iTunes, or iHeart, or whether you're watching us on YouTube on the Megalo Show channel. Yes, normally we are doing silly challenges. We are sometimes doing vlogs, trying to do some vlogs. And uh, and doing different YouTube challenges, but we get a lot of people who message us, and we're so grateful for y'all who who just love us as as a couple. And um, and how long have we been together? We've been together for fifteen years. Fifteen years. So it's just a little eBay baby. I found her a freshman like in high school. <laughs> it was Epstein High. No. Kidding? Just kidding. Didn't. But I was eighteen. You were eighteen. I was twenty-three. Something, something like that. Something like that. Because I'm thirty-eight now, and you're how old? I'm thirty-four. Thirty? Are you thirty-four? Yeah. Oh my God, you're 34. I know, I'm so old now. <laughs> but um, we get a lot of people all the time asking us, you know, about relationship advice. We are by no means relationships experts. Or no, counselors. Or counselors <laughs> or, or, or any of the like, but... We have a happy marriage. We do, we do. We have a very happy marriage, um, but that's with each other, that's sexually, that's... Oh my God. What? <laughs> that's a lot, guess what? When you're in a marriage... Uh, a lot of times the reason they break up is because of not having sex. Yeah. And uh, as uh, there's a litany of things you can get divorced from. But I do get people asking us all the time, like, how do you guys stay so happy? You guys are always doing things together because we're truly best friends yes. as well as, you know, lovers, partners, all the things. The whole deal. Soulmates. And I know you're, if you listen, like, bah, bah. Yeah. but we're a real functioning married couple with the with the daughter as well and, and we also and argue we we definitely argue but not i wouldn't say we don't fight okay we, we get in disagreements we get in disagreements and i'll tell you this it wasn't always like this no the worst times of our relationship were the first couple years first couple years of our relationship so it's not like the second we everything was perfect no. and we just knew anything no it we got here through a lot of communication we got here through a lot of uh of working on ourselves and working on each other and both of us getting better uh individually and so if you would have video or audio of us in the first few years of oh, our marriage there were some things oh, i would not oh, want people to see like embarrassing, embarrassing action, like stuff screaming and Scream, throwing drunk, and drunk not, oh. just a freaking mess man so so we understand that you know yeah there are, are relationships that are like that and and that it's you not can the goal act, it's and, not the goal and you can make it better exactly without having to get a new partner now sometimes you do have sometimes to, you do but, sometimes you do but if you and your partner aren't necessarily the happiest there's lots of things that you can do to work on it to get in a much better place without a doubt and so that's where we're coming from and that's why we have embarked on really trying to talk to people and other couples and make it be a facet of what we do mm -hmm. in our entertainment kind of universe. And um, and so the best way for us to start off was to talk about how to be happy, uh, how to keep your partner happy, um, whether you're a boyfriend, whether you're a girlfriend, whether you've been married for a long time or whether you've just been married. I think they call those uh, newlyweds. Newlyweds, yeah. Or you're just starting out in a relationship. Yeah, well, exactly. Um, right, yeah. And and so you heard where we started from, and how do we get here? Uh, you know, 15 years later, happy. Uh, honestly, uh, you know, I feel like we're at the best that we've been in our relationship, um, and it gets better as it goes along. That doesn't mean we're at the best uh, stages of our career, but I, I would kind of say that we've developed that. I wouldn't say financially. I say we're working on that. We're, yeah. we're not where we want to be with that. Um, and I think that's probably the first thing that I would say. Um, don't allow other things in your life to affect the relationship that you have with each other. I know that's difficult. Mm -hmm. But let's say, and I've been here, all of these. No job, on probation from being an idiot, from being drunk on a fight. Um uh, what else broke 
Um, let's see here. I was depressed with myself for a while. She was depressed uh, with herself. We we all had these outside things going on within our life. Yeah, and within ourselves. Within ourselves mm -hmm. that... Um, Can easily, we could put on each other. 100%. Yeah. But usually when you find yourself fighting over something, like let's say all of a sudden you find yourself and you're fighting with this person and it's over where we're going to go eat to dinner tonight. Mm -hmm. Something stupid. Yeah. Usually that's, you're not fighting about the dinner. You're upset about something else. You're upset. That you upset haven't talked about yet. That you haven't talked about. So it's kind of a little check to be like, whether you, you let's say you're not liking your job, mm -hmm. you're hating your job. Mm -hmm. You hate going to a job every day, but you need the job. Mm -hmm. And then you come home and you find yourself fighting. It's like, well, I mean, you didn't just immediately start fighting because you walked in the door and saw her. It's usually something that you have carried mm -hmm. with. And so, so st would you agree, like keeping in check with what's going on of all the other things going on in your life without taking it out on that person? Well, I think as soon as you start to see like an argument starting to happen or a fight starting to happen, if you take a beat and think about like, what is the root of this? Maybe it is that you're annoyed that he can't pick a restaurant for the 50,000th time. But most likely it's probably something that happened a little while ago or something you've been thinking about for a few days. And so to take that second and really think, OK, why am I going to start a fight? What What is this actually about? Then you'll know how to move on with it better, yeah, you know, w w without a doubt. And and I know that sounds sometimes easy to say, oh, well, OK, well, you know, I, like take that beat, go to the bathroom, be like, you know, I got to go to the bathroom real quick. I'll be right back. Like, that's what I do all the time when I'm just like feel myself like my anxiety kind of rearing up a little bit or just feeling annoyed about something. I'll just say, I, I'll be right back. And then I go, I take a breath. I think about what I what I'm trying to accomplish here, what I'm irritated about and then come back. And we usually and and when I'm gone, that's giving you a second to yeah. think as well. And then we usually come back to either get to the root of whatever we're actually like going through or we realize like it's no big deal. It's and, no big deal. So yeah. whether it's work or school or family issues that are outside and not literally connected to your relationship that can then bleed into your relationship, that leads us to the next thing, communication. And you hear this all the time. You hear this, what's the secret to your, to your marriage? What's the secret? Communication. You cannot understate communication. Yeah. And I know for us dudes, a lot of times we don't want to talk about like, look, I'm freaking, I don't want to talk about it. It's work thing. It's my bros. It's my, it's, I feel out of shape. I'm not the football star I used to be, bro. All these different things that you may be thinking in your head and you don't want to communicate it. Well, guess what, fellas? Women love to talk. Majority <laughs> of women love to talk. And, and, and instead of holding on to it, Holding, and I used to, I, I've, I mean, I do communication for a living, so I've always kind of talked, but it wasn't until I realized, oh, I need to talk about what's bothering me on the right. inside yeah. and talk about it with you so that you understand that you, you, I'm not mad at you. I'm upset about something that's going on in my life or work. Which leads back to the deep rooted, what the deep root was of why you're feeling that way. You know, I think communication and figuring out why you're feeling that way go hand in hand. But communication is something that you can't be afraid of. You can't be afraid no. of addressing it because it's only going to end up helping in one way or another. And making you feel good and making the other person feel good. Mm -hmm. And I think if one, like a lot of times I think that one person in the relationship is better at communicating than the other. And that's something that you have to work on together and help the other person and when someone's trying to communicate to you and you immediately shut them down or put them down or make them feel like what they're saying isn't worth your time, then you're never going to move forward. So you have to as listen, right, listen and really take it in and don't diminish how they're feeling, you know, no doubt. And I think with a lot of times with guys there and this is generally speaking, you know, at least from what I've seen, guys are sometimes looking for a good answer, a, look, a good resolution to it it's mm -hmm. like how do i fix this issue and a lot of times when i've 
when 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 you talk to me, uh-huh. it's about hearing me out, and right. you already know kind of the answer. Right. I don't want your answer. <laughs> and a lot of women <laughs> I just have, need to vent because I've found that women think about things way deeper and they go into and by the time they're talking to you they're kind of feeling you out and it's about listening giving giving your advice or just being there or just being there so Mm -hmm. remember nobody is taking score in your relationship you're not winning anything if you're like well i didn't even talk to her because i I could deal with this on my own you're not going to win a cookie for that you're not going to win a ribbon for that the way to really maintain a healthy relationship make your keep your partner happy is to include them as to what's going on in your life to understand what's going on in their life and so that you you understand what is the story that you're telling yourselves you know mm-hmm. and and because if i hold things back from her no i'm fine i'm fine well no well, what is it no i'm fine and i want to hold it back this is not how i operate but then you're thinking oh wow, he's going to be mad at me yeah, what, why is he mad at me? Why is, what, is, what is he irritated about? Yeah, what is he irritated about? When it could be something totally different instead of me going, you know what, this thing at work really pissed me off and I don't know how to get over it. And next thing you know, you're sharing that information. You're both connecting, which in turn forms a stronger bond with each other. Mm-hmm. So we got two ways so far. Number one, don't let outside environmental, internal things affect your one-on-one relationship, okay? Number two is communicate, communicate, communicate. No way you can understate that. What do you think of the third great way to make sure that you're keeping your partner happy? Making time for them. I think figuring out especially if you have kids, it is like the number one thing that gets put on the back burner is alone time with your partner. And I think it's like the thing that will cause the most fights and breakups and divorces. And I think... And what do you mean by alone time? Be specific. What? What do you mean by alone time? Like, like, <laughs> <laughs> no, doing just, it, doing it, doing it, doing it all night long. No, just being able to connect without kids around or making it it doesn't have to be a fancy date, but like a special little date, something that you just do together, whether you go have a picnic somewhere where you go to a nice restaurant or you just like pick a movie together and you get some of your favorite food and you do that. But just setting a t- setting aside a time, a special be- time for each other. Yeah. Yeah. Making sure that person feels special. I, I, I would agree with that. I think uh, if you're in a situation where you don't have kids. But you have a bunch of friends, and trust me, when you are when you're just a couple, you don't have any kids. You're gonna have a bunch of different friends that you hang out with, and you go to this and you go to that, and sometimes you might find yourself only hanging out with the friends. And mm-hmm. whenever you go out, it's with the friends, and then next thing you realize, you're like, wow, I haven't we haven't spent any time alone. We're always going with out, friends, especially yeah. if you don't live with each other. Yeah, you know, if you're in that situation, if you have a family, what you're gonna find is your focus is on the child or the children, mm-hmm. and um. And at times in our relationship, we've been like, whoa, we haven't, it's been a little bit since we haven't spent any either, you know, had sex or, or, or spent uh, a day, uh, some time together alone. We're just doing something that's like not work related, not house related, like cleaning up the house or whatever, and just going and doing something together and spending yes. some time together. Like yeah. you did when you initially were together, right? you know? So I think that's really good. I think to, to make and like sh- dress up for each other, you know, like put on some perfume, put on some cologne, you, it just make your, like you're dating, you know, make it feel like how it felt in the very beginning when you got excited to see each other and do something together. Without a doubt, yeah. Making sure you have that special time that you make yourself, you'll you'll feel special in the process. You'll make that person happy uh, in the process. It is a win-win. So those are three easy, easy, easy ways to make sure you keep your other partner happy. And that is... Which in turn keeps you happy. Which in turn keeps you happy. Which in turn keeps you happy in your relationship. Number right. one, don't let outside influences or internal influences affect your relationship. Take, figure out the root. Figure out the root. That is such a powerful statement that you can say to yourself all the time. What is the root of this issue? It's communication. <laughs> Talk about that. Talk about what's going on in your life. Include your partner because there's nothing that your partner hates more than a buddy of yours or somebody at work. That knows more about the situation yes, than you yeah that knows more about the situation I, I didn't know that about her that really 
um, doesn't keep the other partner happy. And that's what we're talking about here. Easy ways to keep your partner happy. So communicate, communicate. Nobody's keeping score. Nobody's going, look at that, man. You did a whole three weeks without communicating. You're the man. Or, you know, look at you, lady. You did fantastic. You haven't told him about what's been bothering you for a long time. Right. And number three, make special time for that person mm -hmm. make that person feel special this doesn't mean you have to go on a fancy dinner no you don't go to go to a fancy a french restaurant my wife doesn't <laughs> here's a great thing about my wife she doesn't like fancy foods okay every now I, and I then i like a fancy atmosphere a fancy atmosphere but i don't like the fancy food yes and i love you for that so make that person feel special i have struggled with that in the past i've gotten better i, I regress i get better but it's about that conscious thought about it, about doing it and making sure, because guess what? What happens, fellas, when you make your lady feel special? It makes them want to... For real. Uh, women are emotionally based so many different ways. And when they're not feeling you because they're upset about you, it's something... Or that, that you just didn't put any effort Or that, that zero effort. This little date that she said that she wanted to have. Yes. Then that's not going to keep her happy. So those are three easy ways to keep your partner happy in a relationship. I really hope one of those connected with you. If it did connect with you, and you're watching this on our Meglos YouTube channel, leave a comment below. Leave which one you feel really stuck with you, or which one you're gonna work with and, and, and try and make better. We hope you enjoyed this. We are going to do a lot more relationship advice on the Meglo Show. Don't forget to subscribe to our Meglo Show channel on YouTube. We have plenty more YouTube challenges and vlogs and silly, crazy, fun videos. You're going to see a transformation of our garage. Oh my gosh. A lot of fun Meglo stuff. I do know one thing. Today will be a great day. To the top. Never stop. Bye. Peace.